What's going on everybody? It's Sam Heine here checking in with Family Realty and hey, it is another steamy hot real estate market out there. Um, over the last 12 months alone, the average home price is appreciated by 15% in the Louisville area. Just to paint a picture on a $300,000 house, that is $45,000 gained over the last 12 months. That is crazy. The problem there for the sellers that wanna take advantage of that newly found equity gain is that it's a competitive seller's market out there. So it's gonna be easier for them to sell their house right now and cash out big time, but where are you gonna go next? There's less houses on the market than there are buyers buying. Here's three strategies you can use to help you cash out on your home and find your next dream home without losing your hair in the process. Let's dive right in. Strategy number one is one that I've been favoring a lot with my sellers lately, and that is utilizing the leverage that you have as a seller right now and negotiating a rent back clause into the contract that you ultimately end up accepting for your house. You can actually mark in your listing that you require a one to three month rent back of the home after closing, essentially meaning that you'd close on the home and it would be in the new buyer's name, but then you would have the right to live in the house for a predetermined time frame at a predetermined price point per month. This allows you to cash in on your house while still having a place to stay and time to find the next best place for you. So if you negotiated a three month rent back into the contract that you ended up accepting, for example, um, assuming that deal took 30 days to close, uh, you would have a total of the three months plus the 30 days, so four months total to find the next best house for you. Not bad. The second strategy is taking a sliver of that hard earned equity that we talked about before and putting it to use in a short term rental property that you duck into for two to three months until you find the next best place for you. Let's say you have $75,000 worth of equity in your home right now, and let's say that you want to sell sooner rather than later to take advantage of as much of that $75,000 as you can while the market is at its peak. You could pay off some debt, you could buy a new car, maybe you could put some of it to work in another form of investment in the stock market or crypto, whatever you're into. Uh, would it be worth peeling off $5,000 of that $75,000 to duck into a rental property for two to three months if it meant you could have the rest of that $70,000 to put to work somewhere else? This strategy would allow you to cash in on your house at an all-time real estate market high and also take some of the pressure off of finding the next best place for you without becoming homeless in the process. Strategy number three would be to check with your lender to see if you could pre-qualify to carry two mortgages at once. And stick with me here, okay? Because I'm not about to advise that you actually pay two mortgages at the same time. But if that lender told you that technically you could do that, you would then have the capability to put an offer in on the new house without having to sell your old house. This gives you the freedom to wait until you find the next best place without selling your current place. And then when you do find the right next place, you get that offer accepted while simultaneously getting your current house ready to list for top dollar. With the right plan in place, you can actually close out on your current place as well as your new place at the same time, despite going under contract on the new house before listing the old house. And if for some reason the timelines get bent or pushed back a bit on one or the other, don't sweat it. Typically, you won't pay your first mortgage payment until 30 to 45 days after you close on the house. So you could technically close on each house 30 to 45 days apart and still not pay two mortgage payments at the same time. Now, not everyone's situation fits the mold for being qualified for this type of situation. So if you have any questions at all about whether your situation fits into this mold, uh, reach out to me and I can totally help you figure that out. And then lastly, here's a strategy for all you house hackers out there. Um, if you've been in your home for a certain amount of time and you have a certain amount of equity embedded into your home, you can actually do something called a cash out refinance, which pulls some of that equity out of your current home that can then go towards the purchase of another home. So for those out there that may be interested in keeping your current home as a rental property instead of selling it, you pull out some equity to fund the purchase of your new home, then get a renter in place to cover your payments on the old home while still maintaining 20% or more in the original home, effectively picking up a new diversified investment and paying down both notes at once. Now there are many variables and markers that you'll want to take a look at before diving into this one, but this could be a great long-term play as it'll build up more equity faster. However, it can be an expensive proposition between closing costs and fees on the refinance and the closing of your new house. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this unless you had a certain level of equity in your home and you could maintain a healthy amount of equity in that first house that you were uh, going to do the cash out refinance on. But when you think about the amount of commission that you would pay to sell that house versus what it would cost in fees to refinance that house, you're probably looking at about the same amount of money, if not less, than what it would cost to sell the house. So if anybody out there has a house that might be a solid rental property, reach out to me with any questions, because again, there's a lot of markers on that. Um, this might be the perfect opportunity to look into something like that and hold on to that house and still be able to buy uh, a new house that fits your needs a little bit better than maybe the old one did. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, four epic strategies to help you capitalize on the historically high levels of equity that we all have in our houses right now. 
And just remember everybody that you could use two or three of those strategies at the same time. Remember that you have options out there and don't be afraid to use your leverage on the selling end to offset some of the woes of the buying end right now. You know, it might take a little bit longer to find the next best place for you and your family, uh, but it's happening every single day and there's ways that you could do it while keeping more money in your pocket and just resolving as many headaches along the way as you possibly can. And if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to help you. If you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate in 2022, I would love to be your realtor. So don't hesitate to reach out with any sort of questions. Uh, I'm always around town with my finger on the pulse. Uh, so give me a call anytime, 502-500-6469. Uh, and I'll talk to everybody soon.